Hey, I will personally teach you how to get dreadlocks in the dreadlock school either for yourself or for others. Now in these courses, I'm gonna teach you how to do instant dreadlocks using only two tools. Now this is very affordable considering that if you were to go to a loctician, they would charge you about $100 per session and that's a minimum. And if you were to go in to do maintenance once a month, that's already over $1,000 a year. But if you join the dreadlock school now, you'll have instant dreadlocks forever for only $20. Hey, what is going on everybody? Welcome back to an episode of Great Locks. I'm Gunther the Great, and today we're gonna to be taking a look at J. Cole's freeform dreadlocks. Now guys, first and foremost, we can already appreciate his dreadlocks just because of the freeform style. And if you guys don't know anything about freeform, freeform is essentially just allowing your hair to, like it says, freely form. And we see that J. Cole's dreadlocks are all different sizes, and that is because of the freeform style or the freeform method that he chose to get his dreadlocks. So let's talk a little bit about freeforming and then we'll get straight into it. But before we do, make sure you give this video a thumbs up and make sure to subscribe if you enjoy the content. So like I said, freeform dreadlocks are allowing the, the hair to actually freely form. And like we see with J. Cole's hair, we see all different sizes. We see skinny dreadlocks, we see thick dreadlocks, we see Congos, we see wicks. And the difference between Congos and wicks is that a Congo is two or more dreadlocks combined into one with the tips of the dreadlock still being free. So a wick on the other hand is just a very thick dreadlock all the way through from the root to the tip. And a Congo is created over time from the roots growing out and then dreadlocks combining. And you don't necessarily have to have freeform dreadlocks if you have Congos. I know many people that have Congos and don't have freeform dreadlocks. You can maintain your way into Congos. So say your dreadlocks are getting a little thin, then you can combine two of them together to create a thicker base or a thicker root so it's more healthy and there's not much tension at the scalp. And you can do that by easily just threading the tip of one dreadlock through the root of the other. Typically you would take the skinny dreadlock and thread it through the root of the thicker dreadlock. And if you pull it through, then literally they will grow in together and become a Congo. And eventually if you wanted to, you can combine them together to become a wick. And that's obviously if the dreadlock becomes thick. Let's talk about the stigma of the freeform dreadlock look. A lot of people think that freeform dreadlocks are messy or maybe smelly or uh, so many things come with freeform dreadlocks and I think just so many things come with dreadlocks in general and there's just a stigma that comes with it and what I mean by stigma is people think of dreadlocks a certain way when they hear dreadlocks or when they see dreadlocks and especially with freeform dreadlocks. So we see with J. Cole's hair that it may seem messy or it might look like a mess or it might look like maybe he's just not taking care of his hair. And it's really just a personal preference. And if you're looking at his hair and you can't appreciate it, like of course I can understand coming from, you know, many different perspectives. But one thing that you can really appreciate about Freeform Dreadlocks and especially J. Cole's hair is that it is completely different than anybody else's dreadlocks or hair that you've ever seen. And that's what I really appreciate about Freeform Dreadlocks is that they look different no matter who the person is. And it's just a great way to become distinct uh, with your hairstyle if you choose to be a very unique character when it comes to your hair. Because of course we see people become unique or distinct by dyeing and bleaching the hair, or bleaching and dyeing the hair rather. But I just feel like Freeform Dreadlocks is very distinct and unique in itself just because it looks so much different than anybody else's hair. And I will say this to tag along with what I said earlier about them becoming either smelly or uh, dirty or anything like that. I would have to say that freeform dreadlocks typically are very clean. I feel like people that have freeform dreadlocks, and of course this is a stigma within itself, but in order to have dreadlocks in general, your hair has to be very clean. If your hair is dirty, it doesn't want to lock up that well. If you have a bunch of buildup, it doesn't want to lock up. Um, I've even seen dreadlocks kind of pull apart because there's so much buildup in there. So it's one of those things that just from the outside looking in, people who've never had dreadlocks or people who don't have them, is they don't know how clean they have to actually be in order to have them. And that's one thing to know as well. If you wanna get dreadlocks, make sure your hair is completely clean and make sure to take very good care of your hair because that's the way to lock it up a little bit better. Because if it's greasy and oily and you know, people always say don't wash your hair for about two months or just don't wash your hair in order for it to lock up. Eh, I mean, it kind of goes hand in hand. And of course both methods work, but preferably you would want clean hair because you're not gonna have an itchy scalp, your hair's not gonna smell and it's gonna lock up a whole lot quicker and a whole lot better. One thing we are starting to see with J. Cole is the length of his dreadlocks. And one thing about freeform dreadlocks is when it becomes more lengthy or you get more uh, inches on your hair, they begin to not look as freeform as the beginning. Because we remember J. Cole during the beginning stages of his freeform dreadlocks, they stood up, they kind of uh, mimicked the weekend's dreadlocks or even Bob Marley's when his dreadlocks were short. 
But even Bob Marley, when we looked at his hair when it became longer, it didn't appear as freeform like um, as the world sees it now when it was longer versus how it was when it was short. Just because the dreadlocks stand up when they're shorter. And in my opinion, I do like that kind of, you know, stand up look when the hair is under six inches. I just think it looks cool just because the hair stands up so much. But obviously in this photo, we see that he has a bunch of new growth. And that's one thing to expect with freeform dreadlocks. There's typically gonna be a bunch of new growth because you're not maintaining any of the roots. You're not doing any twisting with gel. You're not doing any interlocking. You're completely allowing it to free form. But like I said, it's one thing to be expected when it goes into the hair becoming longer, that it doesn't appear as much of free form. Of course, looking at them, you can tell they're free form, but they are dropping down. They're not standing up like they usually were. This photo right here kind of shows really well the distinct sizes of his dreadlocks. You see some really, really, really skinny ones that probably are even hardly locked up. And then you see some really thick ones in the back. And that's really to be expected as well. Most of the time you'll see people with very thin and skinny dreadlocks in the front and very thick and very bold dreadlocks in the back. And the reason being is because when you sleep on your head, people typically sleep on the back of their head or even when they're sitting in the car, even like sitting in the car or sitting on the couch, typically people will rest their head on the back of their head. And of course, if you sleep on the sides of your head, same thing applies. Wherever the most traction is, is where the thickest dreadlocks are gonna be. So that's where you see thick dreadlocks on the sides of the head and thick dreadlocks on the back of the head. It's because that's where the most traction is being done. And that's why the dreadlocks on the back and on the sides of the head typically lock up faster than the hair on the top of the head. So keep that in mind. If the hair on the top of your head isn't locking up that quick, just know. It's because there's not a lot of traction going on up there. But guys, J. Cole overall has a really cool and very distinct looking style of dreadlocks. And like I said, it's just something that can really be appreciated because not everybody's uh, free from dreadlocks look the same. When you get twisting with gel dreadlocks or interlock dreadlocks or anything that you do maintenance on, even if you do instant locks, they typically look the same as other people's, which isn't a terrible thing because you can emulate someone else's dreadlocks by doing the methods that they chose in order to get theirs. But you guys, if you did enjoy today's video, make sure to give it a thumbs up. And don't forget to join the Dreadlock School. It is a very affordable option versus going into the Great Locks Masterclass. But although the Great Locks Masterclass, you do get full access to all the classes and all the courses, and then plus you get to contact me directly. But the Dreadlock School is, like I said, a great affordable way to actually learn how to get dreadlocks or even become a loctician and make money off of it. So make sure to join now. But on that, guys, I'll see you guys next time. Peace.